Hi, this is Lit with Chris, and here's what you need to know about Han Kang's The Vegetarian. Han Kang is a South Korean writer, originally born in a small city called Gwangju in 1970. When she was a young girl, her and her family were able to move to the capital city Seoul thanks to her father's growing reputation as a writer. However, in 1980, just months after the family had left Gwangju, a demonstration against the growing military dictatorship was brutally punished in their hometown. Watching from afar, Han and her family were horrified to see that many of the protesters were either injured, arrested or killed by troops during the protests. This has become known as the Gwangju Massacre. The Gwangju Massacre casts a large shadow over Han Kang's work, with many of her books exploring the theme of human violence. The Vegetarian is one such book. Han Kang explores the themes of not only human violence, but also social conventions, nature, and madness. The protagonist's decision to become a vegetarian is the start of her withdrawal from the human race. Yong Hei's desire to be more like a tree is inspired by her realization that mankind is innately violent. Think about it. If we witnessed any other animal raise a cow, shoot it in the head with a bolt gun, split it into pieces, and then shove it between a couple of buns and eat it, we would be pretty appalled whilst watching planet Earth. As such, Yong Hei starts to take solace in nature, which leads to her breaking a number of social conventions that create outrage in those around her. At best, she is mocked by her peers, and at worst, she is raped or detained in a psychiatric facility. Han Kang, therefore, seems to be suggesting that if someone wants to opt out of being a human, those around you will not accept your departure willingly. In terms of style, the book itself is split into three parts. This is what's known as a triptych. Each part of the triptych is delivered by a different character. However, none of these are the protagonist, Yong Hei. The only time the narrative voice does come from Yong Hei is during her dream sequences. This is the only time where readers get to feel or see what has provoked Yong Hei's metamorphosis. The first common misconception concerns Yong Hei's dream sequences or internal monologues in the text. Much like our own dreams, these are deeply abstract in nature. It is often hard to understand or articulate exactly what Yong Hei is seeing, saying, or feeling at these points in the book. The first dream features a rural abattoir, where Yong Hei is surrounded by newly slaughtered meat. As she tries to escape, she describes blood in my mouth, blood-soaked clothes sucked to my skin. She then finds her way to an opening where families are snacking on kimbap and barbecue, seemingly unaware of the gruesome process that has had to occur in order for them to enjoy these snacks. Through these opaque insights into what Yong Hei is thinking and dreaming, we can see that she's coming to terms with how animalistic or savage it is to slaughter a fellow animal simply for its meat. Hence, she's coming to understand how she and the rest of humankind are innately violent beings. She asks herself, what am I going to gouge? And also remembers watching a dog being brutally killed after having bit her and her enjoying its punishment. In the final monologue of book one, she seems to suggest that she can feel the souls of all the animals that she's ever eaten trapped inside her chest. Therefore, it means that every time she takes a breath in, she can in some way feel them and acknowledges their presence. This may suggest why she's so desperate to metamorphosize into a plant or a tree so that she can take sustenance not from her lungs, but instead from the earth, the sun, and the rain. The other common confusion is what exactly happens at the end of the book. 
it is explained that Yong Hei is being transported to another medical facility that can deal with her need to be force fed. But the surrounding trees seem to be having a profound effect on her sister, In Hei. She admits to Yong Hei that she too has had disturbing dreams, but she has thus far resisted the temptation to give in to them. Her eyes are described to be dark and insistent as she stares at the trees, wanting some form of answer from them. Inhei seems committed to remaining a part of society, if only for her young son, but is also waiting for a sign from nature that she would be better served following Yonghei's example. The power nature has is conveyed through its rippling flanks of a wild animal. It may be able to provide the support and protection that Inhei has thus far struggled to find in her life. Han Kang's work continues to be heavily influenced by the Guangzhou Massacre. The themes and motifs that we see presented in her text all combine to explore the idea of the commonality of human violence. The theme of human violence is also explored alongside the theme of nature as a refuge. In addition to that, there's also social expectations or madness. The madness that people are accused of if they defy what is expected of them socially. It is an interesting choice by Han Kang for there to be three different narrators, yet none of which are the protagonist Yong Hei. Perhaps this is supposed to suggest or reflect the fact that Yong Hei has put so much distance between herself and society that not even the reader is fully able to understand her. If you found this need to know video useful, then please think about subscribing and liking via the links below. You can also find a free knowledge organizer in the description for your continued revision of the context, themes and style for the vegetarian. If you have any questions about the text, then please write them in the comments section and I will do my best to field them all.